This is the Louis T. Network. Hey, either you're outside or you're in the lab room. Who else can it be but me, your man, Louis T. Welcome. You are in the lab room. Of course, I am your host, Luke. Thank you for joining me here on this program. Week number 16 in the National Football League. Saturday night football, people. Saturday night football. And I tell you what. Wow. Wow. Wow is the only word to describe the action that we got on Saturday. The NFL hit a home run with, the, with these two Saturday games. And going into the action, I can't say that I actually expected these games to be as good as they were. I didn't expect the games to live up to the hype because the NFL Network, CBS, all the stations had been promoting these games like crazy. Like I told you, they skipped right over Jacksonville, Tennessee. They weren't promoting the Thursday night game. They've been promoting these Saturday games and this doubleheader for at least a week and a half now. So to see these games come to fruition and actually live up to the promos that they put out for these and as many as they put out, got to say, man, I feel very fortunate as a football fan to be treated to two good games like that on a Saturday. Because first of all, it's Saturday. I, you're taking up my Saturday. I, I like having my Saturdays. It's one thing that you already come for my entire Sunday, which, you know, I'm fine with. You, you come for some of my Thursday, which I'm not too happy about. But hey, what can I do? It's football. I can't do anything but watch. Now you're coming after my Saturday. I cherish my Saturday nights. So if you're going to take my Saturday from me, and you came after it from 4 o'clock all the way to the rest of the night. So if you're coming after my Saturday, please make it a good reason. Please give me a reason to feel like I didn't waste my Saturday. And those two games definitely lived up to my ex expectations and actually exceeded them. And for those of you who stuck around for the entire second game, you were treated to a dandy. And hey, look, first of all, to you who stuck around for the entire game, if it was not your team, if you were a Chargers fan, 49ers fan, then I knew you were there. You were there the entire game. You weren't going anywhere. But for those of you who weren't fans of those teams, I commend you for sticking around for the entire game because this one got out of control quickly and you felt like it was going. And again, it's Saturday. You can find a number of things to do on a Saturday night. And one of them isn't watching a blowout. I can tell you that right now. I was tempted a couple of times to do something else. I was tempted, man, but I said, no, I'm going to hang around because the 49ers don't score points in the second half. The Chargers have a chance. So th that was the thing that kept ringing in the back of my mind. 49ers don't score second half points. 49ers don't score second half points. The Chargers have a chance if they can just get out of their own way. But did I really think it was going to happen? I'd be lying if I told you, yes, I thought it was going to happen. I thought they would come close, but I thought on a number of occasions something would go awry, but it didn't. Let's jump into this. This was a great game. 49ers come into the game at 7-7, out of playoff contention in the NFC. However, they're playing for pride. Jim Harbaugh said, look, I don't want to answer any questions about anything other than San Diego. We're trying to finish this season on a high note and finish with a winning record, which for them to do that, they need to win these final two games. And for the San Diego Chargers, it's really simple. San Diego Super Chargers coming into this game at eight and six. They needed to win this game. They still need help to get into the postseason. But in order for them to get into the postseason the most efficient way possible, they've got to win out. And the, the way that they can get in with the least amount of help possible is to win out. Now, if you lose this game and you win in week 17, you can still get in, but you'll need a ton of help that way. Winning this game and next week, all you'll need is a Baltimore loss somewhere along the line. So if you're San Diego, you're just looking to win out and let the chips fall where they may, but you've got to take care of your business first. And that means winning on the road in San Francisco on Saturday in week 16. So for the Chargers, they've been an excellent December team. They, they talked about it a lot during the telecast and it's something that they've done. Philip Rivers has been one of the best December quarterbacks, but he started off this December a little rough, two straight losses. But again, when it's against the two best teams in your conference, what can you do? In New England and Denver in respective weeks, 
Now you got a chance to play against a San Francisco 49ers team that's struggling to score the football. Well, the Chargers are struggling to score the football. And so the 49ers came into this game on a four-game skid. They were once 7-3 and three on the season. Now they're 7-7. Seven and seven. Chargers came into this game at 8-6. and six. This is a team looking to try to get back on track. I just talked about the two consecutive losses for this Chargers football team. They're looking to try to get back on track. After they beat Baltimore, seemed like they were on the uptick, lose two games at home. Now let's see if they can get back on the winning track in San Francisco. Frank Gore had a, an insane first half. I mean, he turned back the clock in the first half of this game. Had 129 yards rushing at the halftime break, did Frank Gore, including a 52-yard touchdown on the opening drive, his longest touchdown in four seasons. This Chargers team had a tough time tackling the entire night, and Frank Gore was one of the biggest beneficiaries of their lack of tackling, especially in the first half. As I mentioned, he had 129 yards at the halftime break, and he had 52 yards on one run to the end zone on the opening possession to give the 49ers a 7 to nothing lead. Phillip Rivers throws the first of his three interceptions that helps lead to a Bruce Ellington touchdown on a catch after Bruce Miller fumbles the football going into the end zone at the Chargers two yard line. They did a fullback dive. He has a football. He's going to get in the end zone and Marcus Gilchrist able to put his helmet on the football and it comes out, great job by Eric Weddle to not allow Anquan Bolden to recover this fumble. And that allowed Manti Teo to pounce on the football and stop the 49ers from getting in the end zone. So huge play by the Chargers. This could have really gotten out of control had they scored on that possession as well. But instead, Chargers able to turn them away with the turnover. 49ers ultimately get back down the field and get in the end zone on the Bruce Ellington touchdown. But... Instead of it being 21 to nothing at that point, it's only 14 to nothing. Then Phils throws, what comes after five? Pick six. Phils throws a pick six. Bring, bring. House call for Antoine Bethea. And, and Antoine Bethea into the end zone. He read the eyes of Phillip Rivers. Phils locked in on OG85 over the middle on a shake route. He stands there, baits him. Picks it off, takes it to the crib. It's 21 to nothing. At this point, those of you watching this game that had something else to do, you were free to go and do whatever it is you thought you needed to do for the rest of the night. I gave everybody permission that felt like, I don't know if I want to stick around for this whole game. Give me a reason to leave. That was your reason. If you wanted to go, you had my blessings. At 21 to nothing, in the first quarter, it didn't look good. It did not look good for this Chargers team. And that was Phillip Rivers' second INT. So you thought, okay, he's turning the ball over. The 49ers who don't score points. The 49ers might have scored, you know, 27 points in the last two games combined. They got 21 in the first quarter. I mean, th though it, with the way they played defense this year, defense hasn't been the problem. You're thinking to yourself, there's no way San Diego is going to win this game now. Down 21-0 after one quarter. And this defense is playing away. And the Chargers have been struggling on offense of late. And they've had injuries along the offensive line. And they don't have Keenan Allen in this game. And they don't have Ryan Matthews for another week. So you're thinking, they just got a lot of things stacked up against them. Probably not going to be able to pull this one out on the road. Kudos to the 49ers for shaking off all of the outside noise and all of the distractions and coming out and playing this well early in this game. So you're like, oh, man, San Francisco not playing. So the Chargers finally get on the scoreboard with a touchdown, but the Niners respond with a touchdown of their own to get in on a Bruce Ellington jet sweep. So they were using him as a threat in this game. And it's good to see him starting to get some touches because he's a guy that they drafted out of South Carolina to do exactly this, to be a guy that you can throw it to out of the backfield, hand it to out of the backfield, run routes, be a punt returner, kickoff returner. To do a number of things, he can fill that void for you, and he did that in this game. And so... Even though the Chargers finally got on the board and showed a little bit of life at 21-7, 49ers come back down the field and the, the Chargers aided and abetted them in getting in the end zone with all the mistakes and penalties. You had a Jeremiah Atauchu offsides penalty when it looked like the 49ers were going to have to settle for a field goal. You had another penalty and there's only one thing I hate worse than bad football. It's dumb football. 
That's the only thing that can be worse than bad. You can, you can stomach a team being bad because, hey, they don't have enough talent. They're not good enough. You get it. They're bad. It's another thing to play dumb football. And what Mark, or excuse me, Melvin Ingram did on the personal foul penalty out of bounds on Colin Kaepernick was just dumb. Okay, third down, he can't find a receiver. He's running out of bounds to his left. He, throw, he air mails it out of the back of the end zone because he doesn't have anything. And Melvin Ingram hits him about four yards out of bounds. Easy call, personal foul, gives the 49ers a new fresh set of downs inside the five-yard line they end up getting in the end zone. You can't win that way. You normally don't win when you do dumb things like that. That was very frustrating to watch a guy hit a quarterback that far out of bounds, knowing the consequences and repercussions for his actions. It was just boneheaded. And he had just come out of the game from an injury like two plays before. I could not understand for the life of me why he did what he did, but he did it. And the 49ers take advantage. It's now 28 to 7. That's the halftime score. Look, Chargers are being dominated every way imaginable in this game. And to me, if they don't find a way to get going early on in the second half, because again, the one thing that I had in the back pocket, my saving grace, because you know, I picked San Diego to win this game, so I'm looking at the Chargers and I'm saying, really? Playoffs on the line? This is what you do? This is how you show up and perform? So the one thing that I had, my one ace in the hole in this game was 49ers don't score second half points. So if you can get on your horse, get it up, if you're the Chargers, and find a way to start scoring some points, the 49ers aren't going to move from 28. That's, that was my thinking. I said, they're not moving. They're not scoring any more points. They're done for the night. So if you can find a way to run off, you know, 24 unanswered, you win. That was my thinking, but it one score at a time. And it'd be nice if you got a big play in there somewhere. Defensively, special teams-wise, you're going to need a big play somewhere along the line to help you out. When you're down this big, I always talk about this, when you're coming back, you're on that comeback trail, you need a big play somewhere in there to help you out. So we move on to the second half. Chargers get a touchdown from OG85, Antonio Gates to start the second half to cut the deficit to 14 at 28 to 14. Then the 49ers start to self-destruct. They have some opportunities to do some things, some penalties. They had penalties in the gate big plays all night long. Here's, to me, the biggest sequence of the game because if this doesn't happen, this game is done. This game is over with. And this is when I knew Chargers got a shot in this game. I didn't know they were going to come all the way back. But I said, they've got a shot in this game. Vernon Davis, 63-yard touchdown negated by a Frank Gore and Staley uh, chop block. So you can't block a guy high and low at the same time. Frank Gore, it looked like Gore had initiated the cut block first. And then Joe Staley came and finished him off at the top. Either way, it doesn't matter whether Staley was there first and Gore came second. It doesn't matter. You can't engage a defender high and low at the same time they did that negates a 60 and it was a beautiful throwback cap to vernon davis and vd has not been a part of this offense the entire season and for him to get off the schneid make a big play like this get into the end zone this is exactly what the 49ers were looking for and what they needed at the time in the game as the chargers were gaining a little bit of momentum wipe it off the board and you go back because the chop block is a personal foul so you go back 15 yards Puts them right inside of their own territory, deep inside their own territory, where Cap is rushed by Dwight Freeney. He also has some pressure from Ricardo Matthews. Freeney gets his hands on him. Ricardo Matthews finishes him off. Ball comes loose. It should have been scooped up and walked in the end zone by Corey Legion, but he fumbles and bumbles the football into the end zone. It's a mad scrum for it, but at the end of the day, Corey Legion ends up on the football in the end zone. It's a touchdown. And to me, that's a 14-point swing. You go from the 63-yard Vernon Davis touchdown all the way to a Corey Legion recovery of a fumble in the end zone. And so instead of the score being 35-14, to 14, it is now 28-21. Chargers only down seven in this game. We got ourselves a ball game, folks. What looked like it was going to be a blowout is now entertaining football. This was a huge play. I, and this is when I thought, man, this, this is a dagger here. There's no way the Chargers come back after this. And Cap escapes, and they had all the momentum in the world did the Chargers at this time. 
they had the 49 and it was it was key because on the touchdown that they scored on the uh, recovery by Corey Legion in the end zone, they also got a personal foul on Joe Staley. He was upset. He thought he recovered the fumble in the end zone because him and Corey Legion were fighting and wrestling over the football. He thought he had enough of it to have to be a safety and not a touchdown. He got upset. He got in the official's face. They flagged him for unsportsmanlike conduct. So now the Chargers are kicking the football off on the ensuing kickoff at midfield. So instead of them just booming it out of the back of the end zone, Nick Novak does something smart. He kicks it up, a pop-up kick, to the goal line that forces the 49ers to come out with the football. And they end up pinning them at the 5-yard line, or excuse me, the 10-yard line. And it seems like they're in trouble. 49ers are in some trouble, backed up deep in their own uh, um, territory. Chargers with all the momentum, 14 unanswered. They've cut the lead to 7 at 28 to 21. They're starting to get pressure. They're starting to get confidence. They get pressure on Cap on this play. And the pocket is collapsing. Looks like Cap's about to take a sack near his own goal line. And out of nowhere, Cap steps up in the pocket and takes off. And I'm thinking, okay, somebody's going to grab him. No. Then I'm thinking, okay, he's in the secondary. Somebody's about to get him. No. I said, okay, Cap's about to slide. Somebody's coming. No. And then I see Eric Weddle. And the one thing you can't do when you've got a guy running at your full speed is stop your feet. And Eric Weddle is just standing there like, okay, what is he going to do? What is, what is he going to do? Whatever he does, I'm going to react to it. Well, you can't react when a guy's coming at you full speed and you're flat-footed. And so Cap just runs right by him, runs a circle around him. It, it, Eric Weddle might as well, well have not moved on the play because Cap ran by him like he was standing still, which he was, and takes off for a 90-yard touchdown run. You rarely see that in the league, a quarterback taking off for that many yards. That, the last time I seen a quarterback do that to a team, Terrell Pryor, when he was with Oakland versus the Steelers, just takes off wide, uh, middle of the uh, field, wide open. He takes off running for a touchdown. Cap takes off running. They can't get him. That's shades of 2012 Cap. We didn't see a lot of that last year. We definitely haven't seen a lot of that this year. That was the 2012 Cap that helped this team get to the Super Bowl. And that was a, a very significant play in the game. I thought that was the one that was going to put the Chargers down for good in this game. Because, again, I said that the, the 49ers don't score second half points. So, for them to get a touchdown there, and there was a flag on the play, I was thinking, okay, blocking it back. That's coming back. Happened to be a legal contact uh, on one of the secondary members for the Chargers. So, the touchdown was good. It's 35-21. At that point, I'm saying, <laughs> 49ers got them now. That, that one hurt. That one stung because all the momentum – the Chargers had built to that point, now gone. You wash it down the tubes, that's a huge play. 90 yards, you're in San Francisco, Crowds get, the crowd gets amped and hyped after they see something like that. Defense now becomes energized. I just thought that was it. I thought that was done. And then we go to the fourth quarter, 49ers up 14, despite throwing his third interception. And then Phillip Rivers has the audacity to throw another interception I said, yeah, this, this game's finished. This game's done. No way. With the way he's struggling, three interceptions, 49ers got 35 points. When did the 49ers score 35 points? When was the last time they scored 30 anything? So I'm thinking to myself, this game is done. And then Phil Rivers says no. And the one thing I love about Phil is and this is one of the, the qualities that you want in a quarterback. Andrew Luck has it. Andy Dalton has it. Joe Flacco has it. You've got to have... And, and, and again, this gene is usually reserved for the quarterbacks that make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> and so it's good to have it. If you're going to make a mistake, you want this gene. But I would prefer you just not make the mistake so you don't have to have this gene. But if you're going to make a mistake, and everybody's going to make a mistake at some point, I need you to be able to overlook that mistake, overcome it, act as if it never happened, and go out and continue to be aggressive and fire in football. And that's what Phil's did. Phil said, hey, look, man, we got nothing to lose. Well, only, only our playoff hopes if we don't go out here and ball out. And he told his teammates at halftime, look, we're going to come back. We're going to give it everything we've got, and we're going to try to make this a ball game. I don't know if we're going to win or not, but we're going to come out here and play as hard as we can for these last 30 minutes and see if we can't come out with a W. And you can see Phils was on a mission in that fourth quarter because he brought his team back, took them down the field time after time after time when they looked like all odds were against them. Takes them down the field. OG 85 wide open at the goal line. Catches it. Falls into the end zone. Gets his second touchdown of the game. Cuts the deficit to 7 at 35 to 28. Then the Chargers defensively, they hang tough. The Niners 
go conservative with the student body left play with Cap. I don't like the play calling here. And this, this is where you see the, the bad play calling of the 49ers, Greg Roman, that has been pretty much consistent all year. They've done a poor job of calling plays in situations. They do it again here. They go conservative. Cap had, had a pretty solid night throwing the football. Not a lot of yardage, but he was pretty accurate when given the opportunity. And so on third and about six, they decide we're just going student body left, take Cap, snap him the football, and have him just roll out to the right or left and have him run the football and hope we get enough blocking to, to get him the first down. And pretty much force the Chargers to use all their timeouts and eat up this clock. But not only did they not pick up the first down, Cap ran out of bounds, so it was a double win. You stop the clock, you got to punt the football, Chargers are getting it back with the chance to win this, or excuse me, at least tie this game up. If they were feeling ballsy, they could go for two and try to win it. So they get the football back. Andy Lee kicks the football, and he punts it into the end zone. So not only do you not get the first down, not only do you not keep the clock running and force the Chargers to think about using the timeout, or at least eat up some of this clock. But now, you don't pin them inside their own territory deep. They're starting at the 20. So that whole possession went all wrong for the 49ers. So this sparks a 15 play and what a gorgeous, magnifico drive it was for Phillip Rivers. Phils showed exactly why. I say he's the most underrated quarterback in the National Football League right here. And again, this is one of those gutty performances that he has, just like in Baltimore, when it all odds seemed against this team, they were dead in the water, they were done, down 10 with six minutes to go. Phils gets on his horse, leads his team back, they win the football game. And Eddie Royal has been huge this season. He was huge here. How about Dontrell Inman? This is a guy I saw balling out of Virginia. He goes across the water, plays some football there. I saw him balling in the preseason. I think one of the games I watched, he had like a 70-yard touchdown grab. And I'm like, man, this Dontrell Inman kid looks good. Want to see him a little bit more. And didn't see him at all this year. Haven't seen him until this game. The injury to Keenan Allen gave him an opportunity. And he took full advantage of the opportunity. Wouldn't be surprised. And I know C.E. Ajira Tutu is a huge special teams performer for this team. So by virtue of that, I don't know if... Dontrell Inman will be able to take his roster spot or not, but the guy can catch the football. Dontrell Inman was extremely impressive in this game. We'll talk about him here in a second, but the Chargers go on a 15-play drive. They embark on a marathon 15-play drive. 14 of those plays passes by Phils, and he needed every single one of them. Two of those completions were on fourth down. One to Eddie Ward, to me, the play of the game. Because if Eddie doesn't catch this, of course, the game's over. But this was great coverage, number one, by the 49ers, okay? Uh, Antoine Bethea was right there. Eddie dives and has to catch it. Fills is under duress a little bit, throws a dart, and he makes a great catch, does Eddie Royal. Just magnificent on all fronts on this particular play to keep the game alive. Another fourth down, Dontrell Inman on a third and nine Runs a 10-yard route, catches the football, breaks the tackle, gets down inside the 15-yard line of the 49ers. So, Dontrell Inman, huge seven grabs, I think over 70 yards in this game. He came in and gave them a lift because C.G. Ajiratutu was struggling early in the game, a couple of drops. They knew they couldn't count on him early on in this game, and Dontrell Inman stepped in and picked up where a guy like Keenan Allen would have left off. So, huge contribution from Dontrell Emmett in this game. Huge game by Eddie Royal. Huge game by OG85. And of course, Phils to shake off the mistakes. Three interceptions, but he overcame that and threw for four touchdowns, including the game-tying score to M80 in the end zone on a beautiful post route in the end zone. And the 49ers were decimated by injuries in this game as well. Both teams, it seemed like just a walking, wounded game. You know, the wounded walking were out there for both teams because... Chargers, what's new? They lose another center. And they've been just injury bit at the center position. They had injuries galore, did the Chargers in this game. 49ers were down to, I saw a, a new Cromartia, Marcus Cromartia, I think his name was. Got all kinds of guys out there. So he was the one beat on the post by M80. Looked relatively easy. Caught it with no, no objection. No, nobody there to defense the pass. It was clean throw by Fields, clean route by M80. 
easy score, knocks the game up at 35, and then uh, Cap has a huge run to give them a chance to set up for a game-winning field goal from 60 yards by Phil the Boot, but it is no good. We go to overtime. 49ers win the toss, and I'm saying to myself, man, this would hurt if the Chargers, who roared all the way back, remember, this team was down 21 points in the second half, down 14 in the third quarter, for them to do all that they've done, to get back in this game, tied up, send it to overtime, for them to get in and lose the toss and have the 49ers to drive it down the field and win would be so gut-wrenching. But you just got to go out and play. And so 49ers win the toss. They get the football, and they start immediately moving the football down the field. And they're having success. Their first three plays were all chunk plays, including a end around to a guy that I thought had a really good game in Quentin Patton. Catches the football, and he's getting up the field, and he makes a move. And he's got one guy to beat. It's Eric Weddle. If he beats Eric Weddle, he's off to the races and going to score a touchdown. Eric Weddle able to get him down. And not only does Eric Weddle get him down, but he shows why he's one of the best safeties in the league. And atoning for that bad play against Cap on the 90-yard touchdown, he strips the ball loose, pokes it free. It's recovered by Sean Lismore of the Chargers. I would have loved to have seen somebody with a little bit of legs and athleticism scoop that up. I mean, there was no 49ers around, and Lismore just dives on it like a big guy does <laughs> and recovers it. And there were about five Chargers around. I mean, literally, he would have been able to, Pick it up. If somebody with some athleticism, a secondary member or someone like that, would have picked that football up, I think there was a return there to be had. But nonetheless, recovered by Sean Lismore, and the Chargers are able to move the football down the field, get into field goal range for Nick Novak, who is able to drive it home in overtime. An improbable comeback is completed by the San Diego Chargers. San Diego Super Chargers come back. On the road, down 21 in the second half, down 14 in the fourth quarter. Find a way to get it done in overtime. 38-35, what an exhilarating game. What a finish to some beautiful action on Saturday with both games coming down to last second field goals. The Chargers had to have it. They got it. 49ers, this game epitomizes their season. They, they just couldn't get both sides of the football together in one game down the stretch. During this five-game losing streak that they're on currently, the defense has played well, the offense hasn't. When the offense finally decides to show up, guess who doesn't show up? The defense, which has carried you the entire season. That's the story of the 49ers this year. They just can't get both sides, offense and defense, to marry with one another and go out and play a complete game for 60 minutes. The Chargers seem to be one of those teams that play all 60 minutes. May not be the best leading up to the final stages of the game, but when it's all said and done, Chargers are going to give you everything they've got, and that's why they were able to prevail with this win. Huge win for them. They're not in the playoffs, but at 9-6, if a Baltimore Ravens team slips up on the road versus, say, a Houston on Sunday, this Chargers team will be ready to pounce and step in and take their place in the postseason. So, huge win for the Chargers. All you can do is win and do your job and let the chips fall where they may. You've taken care of the first half of business. You've got a Week 17 matchup on the road versus Kansas City that you're going to have to get to get in. But when it's all said and done, you've taken care of that first domino. Now you have to see how the rest of those dominoes fall in order for you to try to get into the postseason like you did last year. For San Francisco, tough way to fall in this game. Being up, having the offense finally wake up on national television, have Cap kind of turn the clock back, Frank Gore turn the clock back. The, the, they almost eclipsed their franchise record for most rushing yards in the game. They had over 300 yards rushing did the 49ers in this game. They dominated on the ground. Second half, Chargers were able to slow down Frank Gore, something they could not do in the first half. But this game was there for the taking. The defense did not step up. A couple of fourth down opportunities on the final possession. Defense could not get off the field and get that one stop to preserve the victory. So they dropped to 7-8. and eight. Now all you can do now is see if you can't stop yourself from having a losing season. Got to win that final game against Arizona. That's going to be a tough one to get as well. But 
You'll be at a place that hasn't been that kind to you, Levi Stadium, see if you can't get that one done in Harbaugh's potential last game. I mean, it's a foregone conclusion at this point. He won't be back. And so uh, it will be his last game as 49ers head coach. See if you can't send him out with a bang next week. 49ers drop to 7-8. and eight. Chargers get it done. Move to 9-6 and six on the season. That's going to do it for Chargers 49ers in the lab room. I thank you for joining me. If it happens in the National Football League, whether big or small, we cover it all here in the lab room. Come back and join me as I continue to break down week number 16 in the National Football League. See you in a bit. Sunday action. Enjoy the ride. Mm-hmm.